My name is Teddy Baldessar, and in this video, we continue our series looking at affordable alternatives to luxury watches. Now I'm wearing a hat. All right guys, so this is part two of our series. If you've not seen part one, I will leave a link in the description to check out after watching this video. In addition, uh, just for some ground rules here, I'm not gonna be looking at any homage watches. I uh, wanna be picking watches that at least have some element of originality to them, whether either with their design or the brand in which calls that watch home. And then also going to be looking at at least one different option for each different watch. Of all of those different options, I want one of them at least to be 80% less than the total retail value of that luxury option, but I'm gonna be adding more additional options uh, compared to my first episode where I just did one, just because I think a lot of people were like, hey, where's the affordable alternative, the affordable alternative out here? So I hear ya. And also, if you wanna make fun of my hat, as always, love reading those down below. I was just a little bit too lazy to do my hair this evening and I wanted to record this video. All right, now first up on our list, we probably have one of my favorite overlooked vintage inspired dress watches in under $10,000, let's say. And that is the Glassuta Original 60s. So these watches come in with a price range around $5,000 to $10,000, case size of 39 millimeters, thickness is 9.4 millimeters, movement is an automatic 3952, really beautifully finished, one of my favorite rotors as well and how it's decorated. Uh, water resistance is 30 meters and has a sapphire crystal. So a lot of different color options, and I think that's what makes these so cool. You can go really funky with these or very subdued with the dial colors that you can choose from. And they have that Arabic style numerals, which I just really like. So that's our luxury pick here. Let's look at some affordable options. And the first one for me, automatically that I was thinking of was the Timex Marlin. So this watch comes in with a price of $209, case size of 34 millimeters, comes with a mechanical hand-wound movement, water resistance of 30 meters, and has an acrylic crystal. So I've done an entire review on the Timex Marlin. I think the mechanical option definitely resembles uh, this Glassuta original uh, piece a little bit more than that of the automatic variation of the Timex Marlin. And then just for another option here, I want to also offer up uh, a Russian option, uh, a Russian option. So from Vostok uh, with the Klasika model. And uh, this is a modern reiteration of their more vintage inspired uh, Vostok Precision uh, 2809. And when you think of Vostok, you don't necessarily think of dress oriented watches. We're thinking Kamandirsky or maybe the Amphibia. So a uh, really interesting option as well that share a lot of different design traits. All right, so now for our next luxury watch, shout out John Mayer. We're gonna be looking at IWC Big Pilot. And the particular reference that we're looking at, we're looking at a range of $10,000 to around $13,000. Case size of 46.2 millimeters. Thickness is 15.6 millimeters. Movement is an automatic 52110. Water resistance of 60 meters and has a sapphire crystal. And now for the two options here, I wanted to go for a classic pilot watch style. And we have two different options here. First is from Laco, and we're gonna be looking at the Augsburg. So this watch comes in with a price around 300 to $500, depending on where you live in the world. Case size of 42 millimeters, thickness is 12 millimeters. Movement is an automatic Miyota 821A, water resistance of 50 meters, and has a sapphire crystal. And Laco does have a lot of different variations on their watches and their range. Uh, German brand, great roots in making Fliegers and pilot-oriented watches. Uh, I've done a whole video about pilot watches if you've not seen that. I'll link to it down below if you wanna check it out. But the other watch we have here is from another German brand, Stova. And we're gonna be looking at their classic Flieger. So this watch comes in price range of $900 to around $1,100. Case size here, we're gonna be looking at their 40 millimeter option. They also have different variations of this, uh, one in 36 millimeters. They also have a sport variant that you could choose from. And then you also have a lot of ways to customize these as well. One being uh, from the thickness, if you choose a automatic or a mechanical movement, uh, you have the ability to customize that as well as logo uh, and also date windows. Thickness, you have two different options, 10.2 and then 9.2 millimeters. Uh, movement again varies water resistance of 50 meters and then also has a sapphire crystal and also i actually have one of these in my possession right now going to be doing a review of one of these soon and i also I'm going to be giving this away so if you guys haven't signed up for the giveaway i told you some fire is coming for the giveaway so make sure you're following me on instagram and fill out that giveaway form this will probably be in april uh, later in april we'll do this but we have some other ones slated up before that it'll be awesome as well all right so our next luxury watch is from blanc pond and we're gonna be looking at the 50 fathoms so the 50 fathoms created back in 1953 in collaboration with the french navy's combat swimmers 
is a true icon when we think of diver watches. And I think, unfortunately, doesn't get as much mention when we're thinking about originators in terms of diver watches, like maybe the Rolex Mariner gets, and maybe some Panerai watches get as well. Um, but this is a true icon here that we have. So price here, if we're looking at the reference 5015113052A, is priced between $10,000 and around $12,000. Case size of 45 millimeters, thickness is 15.5 millimeters, power button automatic 1315, water resistance of 300 meters, and has a sapphire crystal. That movement has 120 hour power reserve. And also, if you guys didn't know, I'm actually a time traveling lizard person who actually founded Blanc Pond back in 1735. Um, I look pretty similar to the founder, don't you think? But all right, now for our alternative here, we have Seiko, and the Seiko is the SNZ57. You also have a couple different models here. I think my personal favorite is actually the SNZ53 uh, with that blue dial. I think it looks really sharp, but we're gonna be looking at this model instead because I think it does match that traditional look of the Blanc Pond. Price here, we're looking at $100 to $150, case size of 42 millimeters, thickness of 14 millimeters, powered by an automatic Seiko 7S36, water resistance of 100 meters, and has a Hardlex crystal. All right, so now for our next watch, we're looking at Zenith, and we're looking at a chronograph from Zenith. It's not gonna be the El Primero, because I really couldn't find a good alternative to the Zenith El Primero uh, on the market today at a more affordable price. I think that watch is truly I iconic and one of the best chronographs ever made. But one watch, a chronograph from Zenith that I really do love and just the minimalist styling. One of my favorite chronographs under $10,000 is the Zenith Elite Chronograph Classic. So these watches come in with a $4,500 price. It's around $6,700 on the upper end if we're going for the steel option. Case size of 42 millimeters, thickness of 11.8 millimeters. Movement is an automatic El Primero 4069 water resistance of 50 meters, and has a sapphire crystal. So I did love the just minimalist style of these. I've always enjoyed these a good amount. And you, I mean, you have an El Primero movement in there, probably some of the best chronograph movements out on the market today, and probably in the history of watchmaking. Now for the two affordable watches, we have two mechanical chronographs we're gonna be looking at. One is from a micro brand, the other one's probably a noteworthy chronograph, a vintage inspired chronograph that you've probably heard of. Uh, so first is the Bicompax from Baltic. Probably one of my favorite looking vintage inspired watches and chronographs, especially under a thousand dollars. So when we're looking at this watch, we're looking at a price of $500, around $617. Case size, 38 millimeters, thickness, 12 millimeters. Powered by Seagull movement, so we're looking at an ST1901. Water resistance 50 meters and has an acrylic crystal. And then the other watch here, and I just want to give mention to, is the Seagull 1963. Both of these are using a Seagull movement, and I know Seagull movements have a lot of detractors. Uh, one thing I'll just say is the fact that you don't have a lot to choose from if you want to go the mechanical route for a chronograph movement under $1,000. So I'd love to hear your thoughts down below. Like, what do you guys think of Seagull movements? All right, next we have Patek. We're going to be looking at the Patek Nautilus in stainless steel and the reference 57111A. So these watches come with a retail price of $29,800, case size of 40 millimeters, thickness of 8.3 millimeters, powered by an automatic 324SC movement, water resistance of 120 meters, and has a sapphire crystal. So the Nautilus was first introduced back in 1976 and has been really the leading stainless steel sports watch from Protect ever since. However, given its price tag, we definitely have to look at some helpful alternatives here. First being the Seiko SNK K47. You also can look at the K45, but considering how I think word has gotten out that this is a good alternative to the Nautilus, it has a very similar case design, uh, the prices of these have gone up ridiculously. And we're talking like 500 plus dollars on eBay for one of these things now. So completely absurd for a Seiko 5. But you can find the K47s uh, for around $100 to $150. And so with that $150 price, case size of 38 millimeters, thickness of 12 millimeters, also has an automatic Seiko 7S26 movement, water resistance of 30 meters, and has a Hardlex crystal. So two other more, maybe a little more expensive options. One was mentioned in the last video when I talked about alternatives to the AP Royal Oak, uh, but I think it also is a very good option here, and that is from Maurice Lacroix, uh, looking at the Icon model. Um, really awesome looking uh, steel sports oriented watches, really good specs, and probably one of the more underrated brands when I'm thinking about brands on the market now today. And the other option, again, from another, I think probably underappreciated brand, uh, Victurnox with their Inox Mechanical. Uh, they also have course available options, but these watches from the mechanical side of things, $600 to $850, case size of 43 millimeters, thickness 12.7 millimeters, movement is an automatic ETA 2824-2, 
a water resistance of 200 meters, and then has a sapphire crystal. But it might be a good option if you want something a little bit more rugged that have some elements of the Nautilus within it. So guys, if you like this video so far, be sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and then hit the bell icon. Always appreciate it. So next up we have the Rolex Mariner. And there are so many homage watches to the Rolex Mariner. It's honestly ridiculous. But I'm gonna be looking at some different alternatives that you can go for that might have a little bit more of an original design uh, that I think are very good value for money from two different ranges. First being from Oris. So two different options from Oris. You have the Oris Aquas, which I think probably from a spec standpoint, better value for money, but from a personal styling standpoint, aesthetics only, I love the Oris Diver 65. And that's the one we're gonna be doing a little bit deeper dive into. So reference here is the 01733-7707. 4354075245. Those orders the reference numbers, man. Price $1,000 to $2,000. Case size of 40 millimeters. Thickness is 13.14 millimeters. Movement is an Aura 733 movement. That's a Salita based movement. Water resistance of 100 meters, so certainly a little bit low on that end, and then also has a sapphire crystal. So this line, you certainly have a lot of different options. This one uh, with the black dial, bronze actually accents on this, but if you don't wanna go for that route, you can go with a blue dial, silver dial, there's green dials. You also have 42 millimeters, 40 millimeters, as well as 36 millimeters. So a lot to choose from in that regard. And then from a very affordable alternative here, I think we have to look at Orient. I think Orient from under $150 probably make the best bang for buck divers now with the SKX prices just rising and rising and Seiko not really updating their movements and their very entry level watches, which they probably should, but that's probably for another video. And we're gonna be looking at two watches, one that I've done a review on, uh, the Orient Mako 2 and then also the Orient Ray 2. So these watches have pretty much identical specs here. Price $100 to $150, case size of 41.5 millimeters, thickness of 13 millimeters, movement is an automatic Orient F6922, water resistance of 200 meters, and has a mineral crystal. Now next up we have a personal favorite, the Cartier Tank Louis. And probably my favorite looking square dress wash. I mean, this thing is just so elegant. And looking at a mechanical option here from the line, there's a lot of quartz options as well available from Cartier. Uh, but this watch comes in $9,500, around $12,000. Case size dimensions, 33.7 millimeters by 25.5 millimeters. Thickness is 6.6 .6 millimeters. Movement is a hand winding 8971 MC movement. It's a JJ LeCoultre caliber 846 base. Water resistance is 30 meters and has a mineral crystal. And uh, the first alternative is from kind of that mid range here uh, from Longines, looking at the Dolce Vita. So this lineup of watches has a ton to choose from. I'm gonna be looking at the reference L57574710, as I think it's a very good uh, alternative and matchup with the Cartier here. Uh, so price, we're looking at $1,000 to around $1,500. Case size is 27.70 by 43.80 millimeters. Movement is an L595, 592, that's an ETA-based movement. Water resistance of 30 meters and has a sapphire crystal. And then for our very affordable option, we have a Seiko. Comes in with a price around $90 to $150. Case size of 32 millimeters by 28.5 millimeters. Thickness 6.1, powered by a Seiko Quartz V115. Water resistance of 30 meters and has a Hardlex crystal. You can also go for the SFP608, which is a smaller watch on the wrist compared to this variation. And Seiko overall makes a lot of really solid looking square dress watches in this very affordable tier. All right, now for our last watch, we have a brand that's a total grail of mine. Maybe not this particular watch, but a watch that I still very do much like, and that is the Longa 1815. So we're gonna be looking at the standard uh, two hand with the sub second at the six o'clock and with the reference 235026 in white gold. Price here we're looking at $18,500 to $22,000. Case size of 38.5 millimeters. Thickness is 8.8 .8 millimeters. Movement is a manual wound L0511. Water resistance of 30 meters and has a sapphire crystal. So this is the 38 millimeter variation of this model. You also have the flyback chronograph versions that you can get of this watch as well, uh, of this family of watches from Longa. And honestly, some of the most beautiful watches that you could find in the market, in my personal opinion. Uh, so the alternative to this, so the watch we're gonna be looking at here, it's gonna be a little bit more expensive compared to uh, the other watches that I mentioned, but I think it's a really good parallel and a very good looking watch from a brand with great history, and then it's Tissot. And we're gonna be looking at the Tissot Heritage Petite Sub Seconds. So these watches come in with a retail price of $995. You can find the quartz variations for around $650. 
case size of 42 millimeters, thickness is 11.4 millimeters, powered by a manual ETA 6498-1, water resistance is 50 meters, and has a sapphire crystal. And just a really cool heritage inspired watch from Tissot. So guys, if you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe, hit the bell icon. Probably could do a part three of this series. If you wanna see it, definitely give this video a thumbs up. Always appreciate it. Also, if you wanna get an iconic watch for yourself, make sure to hit the link in the description, go to Bob's Watches. Uh, any purchase also supports the channel. And I also did a video with their CEO recently looking at some of the most rare Rolex and Mariner references in the world. Uh, so if you wanna check that out, I can link to it in the description. Also, if you wanna join our watch giveaway, fill out the watch giveaway form, like I mentioned in the beginning of this video. And then also head over to my Instagram. You wanna be following me there as well to be able to be eligible to win. Head over to our website. We have some awesome watch straps available if you want to go ahead and purchase one. It's a great way to help the channel. But guys, thank you again so much for watching. Always appreciate it. And I will see you all very soon.